Today we're continuing the series of grading every single team individually. We're grading their 2023 NFL draft picks. This is an absolute beast of a series I'm doing. If you guys haven't seen your team yet, please stay patient. It is coming. So the way I do this is I go through, I talk about pre and post draft analysis. If it is there on ESPN, I give my overall team grade and I then give it a comparison and go through Mel Kuyper Jr.'s draft grades and PFF draft grades. So in this video, please stay patient. We will hit three different articles here and go over draft grades. Once again, I am Two Tone Sports. If you do not agree with all of my draft grades or prospect viewpoints, please let's just, let's discuss down below in the comment section. Love getting interactions from the fans. And as always, any support you guys show to the channel is much appreciated. I love you guys. This is what keeps me going. So let's jump into this one. We are going to be doing the Cincinnati Bengals, man. You guys were a step, step away. So round one, pick one, not pick one, but pick one for you guys. Miles Murphy. The six foot five, two hundred and sixty eight edge defender out of Clemson. I love this guy. I really did. I loved Miles Murphy. Um, I'm gonna read his comp his pre and post draft analysis as long as with his comp as you can see here. And we're gonna get into it. All right, pre draft. Murphy is a high motor pass rusher who has great takeoff quickness. Uses his long arms to neutralize offensive linemen and closes well. He is an instinctive run defender with the strength and length to stack and shed offensive tackles. He chases with great effort and makes plays in pursuit. Murphy's tape is a little too inconsistent, but he has impressive tools which to work with. Okay, ready? Matt Miller's NFL comp is Bradley Chubb. If you can get Bradley Chubb here, what a home run pick. Post-draft, Murphy lands in an ideal spot with a team that rotates its defensive ends frequently. Entering a I was literally going to get into this. Entering a competitive rotation that has already included Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard, and Joseph Asai. He adds a different dynamic to the rotation. With 18 sacks over the past three seasons, second most in ACC, his ability to generate pressure comes naturally. What is his projected year one impact? Day one rotational contributor. Murphy turns into a starter early in his career, but the Bengals' depth at defensive end will allow them to use him in situational pass rusher to develop before playing him as an every down role. Okay, so I got a couple notes here. First, we're gonna get into it. You guys have hit Trey. You guys have Trey Hedrickson, Sam Hubbard, Miles Murphy was a little bit of a head scratcher to me. But his intangibles are all there. 6'5", 268. He's got the speed. He's got everything. I thought there was better value on the board at different positions. Okay. You guys come into this draft needing a corner, tight end, running back, safety, and guard. Now, you did address them, but I'm going to get into this in a second. I generally thought the right move here. Probably should have been Michael Mayer. I thought you guys were going to pick Michael Mayer. I was watching the live. I was watching live on here on YouTube. I thought you guys were going Michael Mayer. I really did. It made sense. Giving Burrow another weapon, it made sense. You guys want Miles Murphy. I get it. You guys need more pass rush. You want to keep them all healthy. You guys are looking at what the Eagles have been doing. It makes a lot of sense. It really does. I can harp on this pick for a while, but like I said, I'm going to give my draft grade at the end of all the picks. So, let's go to number two. DJ Turner. This dude flying. Flying. Love this pick. 5'11", 178 pounds out of Michigan. 
Turner is a well-coached and technically sound corner who is scheme versatile. That's huge. Ran the fastest 40-yard dash at a 4.26 of any player at the NFL Combine and can carry any receiver downfield. He has a good feel for route combinations and excellent closing burst. He ran the second fastest 10-yard split of any player at the Combine. His lack of length and size show up in 50-50 situations and run support. But he's scrappy. Look at the comp at Dory Jackson. This kid in the second round is a burner. You guys, you guys are destined in the face. Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, the Chiefs in Pat Mahomes, and or the Bills. You're going to face one of them in the playoffs. You're going to face one of them in the playoffs and Lamar Jackson, who just added speed. You're going to face one of them. You need a burner like this. So awesome pick. Really awesome pick. I love this pick. And I like the value on it too. Here's another one I loved. Jordan Battle. 6'1", 209 pound. He's an Alabama safety, guys. Alabama safety. What do we know about Alabama secondary players? Come on. Also, to give a little background here, I am a Chargers fan. So I try to be a little biased here. I try to keep everything separate. I'm an NFL fan. I like players. I really do. I love players. But I had to choose a team. It's the Chargers. So there's a little background there. Battle is instinctive. Has a quick pedal and closes well when the ball's in the air. He plays with good balance and body control. As a run defender, Battle battles an effective wrap-up tackler who takes sound angles and flies to the football while remaining under control. Post-draft, both, both, wow, I'm having trouble speaking, both Jesse Bates and Von Bell left in free agency. The Bengals signed Nick Scott and 2022 first-round pick Dax Hill has a chance to be good. So Battle doesn't need to start as a rookie, but he improves the depth and has the potential to develop into a starter early in his career. I'm going to hit you guys with this. He's going to be starting by the end of the year. He's going to be starting at the end of the year. Where? Who the hell knows? He's going to be starting for you guys. I love this kid. Watch his tape. His play rack is off the charts. His instincts is crazy. Third round, you needed a safety. This was an awesome scoop. This really was. This was an awesome this was an awesome scoop, man. I was sitting here. Charlie Jones fell to the fourth. You guys don't understand the value on this. 5'11", 175, and you also got to borrow another weapon. Like, what the hell? Jones is a savvy route runner who gets in and out of breaks without gearing down is, and is adept zone beater. He has soft and reliable hands, transitions upfield effortlessly, Jones is quick and shows good open field instincts after the catch. He's a route runner. This is really good value in the fourth. He was sitting in Daniel Jeremiah's top 10 available since like the end of day two. This was, this is a solid pick. This really is. Wish he had a little bit better on size, but this is a solid pick. Here we come with one of my favorite picks you guys made. This really is one of my favorite picks you guys made. Watch Chase Brown's tape. What's up with Joe Mixon? Who the hell knows if he's going to get in trouble or not? I don't know. We never know what's what's going to happen with Joe Mixon, if he's staying on the field or not. Chase Brown, dude, is awesome. Brown is a efficient runner who has the patience and foot speed to press the line of scrimmage. Get second, get second level defenders to commit hard. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place reading this. Get second-level defenders to commit and then bounce into an open gap. He runs hard, powers through arm tackles, and bounces off defenders. Brown has big hands, looks the ball in, and flashes after the catch. I love this pick to you guys. I really do. You guys are going to use them. Please watch. If you haven't, Bengals fans, if you have not, please watch Chase Brown's tape. Please. Six foot three receiver out of Princeton. I'm going to call him Andre. I'm not going to say his last name because I'm going to butcher it. All right. He tracks the ball. He tracks the deep ball well and has the frame to come down with the 50-50 balls. 
flashes the ability to make the first defender miss and runs hard after the catch. He's also tough going over the middle and makes plays in traffic. He's from Princeton. He's got to be smart, no? This is an awesome pick. This really is. That really is a sick, sick pick. A big body, Burrow. We really hope he makes the roster. Your receiver room is pretty full. What's going on with Higgins? How long is he staying? Is Boyd staying? We don't know. We know Jamar's staying. But, man. Then we got a punter in round six. This was interesting to me. This really was. Robbins is a powerful punter who finished with the second best career punting average and single season average. 46.33 in Michigan history. He holds on place kicks. You guys saw the value in getting a special teams player. I can't knock it. It's a sixth round pick. Realistically, sixth and seventh round picks are special teams players anyway. This is who you wanted. You went and got him. I can't knock it. It ain't going to add value to your picks, but it's not going to take away to the value of the grade. All right, and then you got DJ Ivy, which, as you notice, there's not even dimensions. They, we don't even, I don't even know what he's measured here, okay? Ivy started 33 games at Miami, picking off six passes over his career. He's lean with good top end speed. Ivy has the length to get his hands on receiver and reroute them. Special teams pick. Can't knock on it. You get in a corner depth. All right, guys. I'm going to give you a B. You got to hear me out on why I'm going to give you a B before you start freaking out and get off the channel, okay? I thought you guys could have done better with your first round pick. I like Miles Murphy, but he still needs some work. He's in a room with you guys that you're going to get the best out of him. So this can easily turn into a B plus draft. But I'm going B because I genuinely thought you guys would have scooped up like Michael Mayer. Okay? And you didn't even address the tight end. You didn't even address... I thought you guys would have went tackle. What's going on with your tackle? Is he staying? I know there was a little bit of... Uh, I'm going to call it turmoil in the offseason with him. But Miles Murphy here. Yeah, the value's all right. Don't get me wrong, the value's okay, but I just thought you had better and bigger needs. If you can get Bradley Chubb out of here, I'll eat my own words. I honestly will eat my own words. DJ Turner, I thought this was great value with Dory Jackson comp. You needed the speed, especially with getting into the playoffs and honestly what these other teams have done. This is a solid pick. 426. Speed guy. That's awesome. You're getting Jordan Battle, excuse me. Jordan Battle out of Alabama for play rack. This is an awesome pick. Third round pick on this safety. He honestly could eventually start for you guys. That's an awesome pick, especially after losing two safeties. Charlie Jones was great value. Chase Brown is an awesome, awesome backup running back. Has potential. There's nothing wrong with a six foot three receiver. You guys wanted your punter. Already went over that. And then you have DJ Ivy. That's the reason I give you guys a B. Okay, let's hop over to Mel Kuyper. Mel Kuyper give you a B plus. Let's read into it. Little surprise with the Bengals' choice to take edge rusher Miles Murphy in round one. If only because they were solid tight end safeties and corners still available. Credit to them for not reaching for a direct need. <clears throat> okay, we're here. Though, as a team can never have too many pass rushers, Murphy likely will slot in as a rotational behind Henderson Hubbard as a rookie, but Murphy is going to make an impact. I like his chances to be a starter in 2024 and beyond. I agree. Cincinnati filled needs on day two. You're going to hear about the speed of Michigan corner DJ Turner. Ran a 4-2-6 at the combine, but he had good tape last season too. He isn't just a burner. And now he'll get to play with former college teammate Dax Hill in the secondary. Forgot about that. Safety Jordan Battle is extremely versatile. Started three years for Nick Saban defense, so you know he's been well coached. Literally what I said. Wide receiver Charlie Jones and running back Chase Brown were nice values on my board. Joe Mixon had a down 2022 season, and I could see Brown getting some carries as a rookie. Andre is a raw wideout from an, the Ivy League with sprinter speed in a six foot three frame this is a dart throw but it's kind of the round but it's the kind of round seven pick i can get behind there you go 
Bengals did a solid job filling their needs, though I'm not going to give them an A because they didn't take a tight end in one of the deepest tight end classes over the past 20 years. That's a miss. Overall, if Murphy develops into an every down player, we could be looking at an A class in a few years. Guys, this is literally what I just said. I, I don't read this. I don't read this until the video. That's crazy. That's literally what I said. I gave you guys a B. Maybe it was a little too harsh on you guys. I'm also, I liked Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer went to the Raiders. But I agree with Mel. Let's see what PFF has got for you guys. Okay, day one. Murphy looked like a future top five pick after freshman season. That saw him produce 85.2 PFF grade. I like giving you guys PFF's point of view because it gives a different analytical angle to this. So, let's keep going. But we never really saw him progress beyond that. However, he has produced a PFF grade of at least 79 in each of the past three seasons and racked up 76 pressures over the past two years. Day two. Turner can flat out fly over the 426. We've heard it multiple times. He did get picked on a little at Michigan, and there's still a fair amount of development needed. But he allowed just 46.5% of passes thrown into his coverage to be caught in 2022 and forced 14 incompletions. Bengals lost both starting safeties, so battle could be a long term replacement for Von Bell. He was one of the most consistent defensive backs in college football, earning 80-plus PFF grades in each of the past three seasons while playing more than 800 snaps in each. That's awesome. That really is. That's freaking awesome. Day three. If the Bengals are looking to find a long-term replacement for Tyler Boyd in the slot, Jones could be just what they're looking for. Dropped 2.7% of catchable passes thrown his way in 22 and averaged 2.7 yards per route run over the season. Moving on to Chase Brown. It was a workhorse at, workhorse at Illinois with big play speed. 83 fourth missed tackles are second behind Bijan. He's not a great receiver and at times has fumbling issues. Brown profiles as a useful RB2, which is exactly what the Bengals will be looking for after losing Shamaje P. Ryan. What a name. Now we got Ivy carried a career high 76.2 coverage grade across from Tyreek Stevenson at Miami, but only had six combined interceptions and pass breakups all year. Giving PFF gave you guys a draft grade of an A. So I was off. I was a little harsh on you guys. I gave a B. Mel gave a B plus. They gave you an A. I kind of just weighed the value of need here. I get the Miles Murphy pick. It's a good. It's he's going to be a starter. He's going to be started down the line. I just thought you guys need a tight end. You didn't even address it. Um, corner and safety were good. Charlie Jones is a good pick. Chase Brown's a good pick. So I just thought you guys probably would have went. If you guys went in my eyes, okay. Once again, just my opinion. If you went tight end in the first round, this is an A draft. I don't know. I just value. I just view what Joe um, Burrow does. I just think you need to consistently build, build, build on him. Um, I thought your edge group is good enough. So, whatever. I could be wrong. I would love to debate you guys in the comments. Who knows? I can always change my mind later on if you guys... Decide that you want to change my mind. We'll see. So, guys, this is Two Tone Sports. Once again, I appreciate any support that you guys bring to the channel. This is the Cincinnati Bengals draft grade by me, Mel Kuyper, and PFF. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching.